Do you like anime? Do you like Japanese inspired things? Do you like clothes? I'm sure you like to stay warm. Well, I got this stuff for you. Introducing Imori.com, a website that introduces anime and Japanese inspired styled clothing made in house. And you can use the code Uchi15 to save yourself 15% off of all these cool, dope hats, beanies, hoodies, t shirts, sweatpants, and way more where that came from. That's Uchi15 at checkout to save yourself 15% off your entire order at imori.com. Hey, what's going on, guys? Boy Uchi. And uh, today's discussion is uh, going to be I want to try to keep this as short as possible, but there's a lot of things that are on my mind about this topic um and it's about final fantasy 7 remake so if you've been following my twitch which you can follow in the link in the description below this has been a game that i have been waiting for for a very very long time much like a lot of other diehard final fantasy 7 fans you know i'm sure there's been people that have been waiting for this game a lot longer than i have but to kind of give you guys a quick backstory I've been following this game ever since they released that tech demo on the PlayStation 3 in the mid-2000s. And ever since we got a tease at the PlayStation 3 capabilities as far as their graphics are concerned, and they did it with Final Fantasy VII, it kind of begged the question like, well, why would they go out of their way to make something like this? And it kind of started putting ideas into fans heads that maybe that this was something that they're working on but it turns out it wasn't at all it was just for the purpose of showcasing the capabilities of what a playstation 3's graphics would look like and ever since then fans have been clamoring over the fact or the idea of a final fantasy 7 remake and as the story is told we literally did not get any kind of hint or an idea that this would actually become a reality one day and years and years have would pass and they would consistently and continue to port the original game onto other platforms like the PSP and the PS3 and the, and then the PS4 and now even Steam has Final Fantasy VII. After an E3 press conference many, many years ago, when they announced that the Final Fantasy VII original game was going to be ported to the PS4, the reaction was actually a silent one. And this is something I've also, I've said in a lot of other discussion videos and streams in the past and that the best type of reaction, if you really want something to change or you want something to happen, you cannot have any kind of reaction. You just have to go quiet because even though negative energy or negative attention is bad, attention is always going to be attention no matter what because it, it gets people talking. And if people are talking about it, then that means that the game is getting or whatever it is, is getting exposure. And so the fact of the matter is, is when they announced that Final Fantasy VII was going to be on the PS4, not the remake, the original, the fans in that audience were literally dead silent. No one was excited. No one was even happy because at this point in the game, at this point in life, we've been waiting at, you know, more than 15 years already. And like, it's not uncommon for games to get remakes or remasters or reboots we see it happen a lot with you know anime especially nowadays man a game like final fantasy 7 being as popular as it is you have to question like why haven't they done this yet especially with doing a tease so early on right before the ps3 was about to drop and so the following year and, and they and they must have they must have looked back at that or realized that this is bad because we know that fans have wanted a remake and we keep putting it off or just telling them that it's not going to happen. I'm, I'm speaking like I'm square, right? So we obviously decided that, all right, we can't ignore them anymore. We can't ignore the actual desire, the necessity, it seems, for this game to happen, for this project to undergo. And literally one full year later at the following E3, they did it. They actually showed us a trailer and it looked amazing. It was beautiful. And I feel like everyone around the world was very, very happy with what we saw. It effectively, in a way, changed my life. Now, this video is to kind of talk about my experience with the game and what it's done for me, right? And there's a lot of good and a lot of bad, surprisingly. So let me get this out of the way. So let me get all the good the good out of the way. When I played this game, I was very excited and I was very happy to be playing it in the first place because there was a very high chance that I wasn't even going to be able to play it 
on launch. It, it, it sucks nowadays because with social media and media in general, and just how the internet works, if you're not on something the second it drops or you're not on it as like around the start time of whatever it is then you're in what i would like to call like the outside norm so basically what i'm trying to say is if you're not on it from the beginning then you're just not a part of that group of people that are in the know you know what i'm saying aside from all that you then run the risk of becoming brought into spoilers and you know because for someone to have paid a price for a game or whatever right and you know they're excited and they just want to talk about it with people that have or who are or maybe haven't no one's technically wrong for going out on the internet and exposing their experience everyone has that right to do it it's frowned upon if it's early especially if you reveal things like spoilers and such but at the end of the day, it's it's a very real thing. My thought, you know, like I said going b before, because of this crisis that's going on in the world and me being temporarily laid off, which I'm still laid off, I've been home for almost like a full month now and it's been a really weird time and of course i haven't i haven't spent any money on anything recreational or you know necessary for like my streams or like my my video content besides bills bills have been the only thing that i've been paying luckily i got i, I recently just got my tax return i should be stable for the foreseeable future near foreseeable future but on my stream I was very happily graced by my girlfriend who she donated sixty dollars and she literally put in her donation like give the people what they want to see final fantasy 7 remake and i was very happy i'm very grateful i have i have such great support in my life as soon as my stream was over i went ahead and i downloaded the game digitally and i had it ready for midnight on that on the friday release so I didn't have plans on having very long streams. Normally when I stream, I stream for about three to four hours on average. And that's a pretty healthy stream length to have, right? But as soon as I started playing this game, my streams went from three to four hours to 10 to 12 hours. And then at the final climax, I had an abrupt impromptu 27 hour stream. Shit! So, like I said, or I, like I was trying to start with before, the good. The great things about this game is the fact that it exists. The fact that it is here, it is now, it is live. It is something that we've been waiting for for a very long time, and they did not just do it for the sake of doing it, and you can tell. They took an eight-hour section of the original, which is Midgar, right? and they gave us a 40 to 50 hour movie experience on a whole nother level that was so immersive and it literally sucks you in the second you start playing. And if you are a fan of the original and you've played at least that portion of what which in which the game covers, you will literally feel so much nostalgia and you will probably get hit in your feel box. For me, I still to this day have not finished the original, which I still intend on doing. But as far as my original progress goes, I, of course, completed way past Midgar, but I'm not really sure what disc I would be on from where I'm at, and I honestly don't even remember the last thing that I was doing. I remember that I'm definitely past the part where we get uh, Red 13's backstory, which is a very good backstory. But aside from that, thinking back and, and remembering the time and remembering how the original Midgar was and being familiar with the soundtrack, and obviously we're going from like box visual visuals to this like ridiculously amazing quality in its graphics and how they took all of the songs and they basically remixed them almost remade them and just made remixes on the remixes there's a lot to this remake that you have to just kind of take a seat and realize like they made a masterpiece with this first edition right because we already know like this is going to be a multi-part game and it makes sense they made like i said an eight hour experience from the original game that's not even the first like that's just eight hours of the first disc they made 
eight hours into 40 to 50. It literally, I clocked in like 40 something hours total. Probably like 50. I don't even know. It's probably more than that because some of those bosses towards the end were like seemingly impossible. It was pretty nuts. I was taken back. I was really not even just impressed. Like I was, I, I felt like I was a part of the world of Final Fantasy VII in a way that I, I never was before. And I really loved and appreciate the original game. I feel like it's definitely one of the better and best RPGs out there. And with a story like it has, to see it basically come to life in this format was so breathtaking and just i am actually looking forward to taking some time throughout you know the next few days or whatever to check out maximilian's rebroadcasted or like his his video versions of his playthrough because i know he's one of the biggest fans of final fantasy and he's actually one of the things that kept the development team running because in one of his videos where he talked about his experience with meeting some of the people at square enix he actually revealed that when there was times where they felt like they were down and out, they would play his reaction to their reveal of this remake. And as a content creator and as a fan, if I was to ever be told that I was part of the reason that kept them working hard and making sure that they got everything, not even just everything right, but like, but better, I would have cried too. I felt it when Max was telling this story and I was just like, I, I choked up a little bit. I was like, dude, like that is amazing. That is crazy. And 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 Final Fantasy is a big deal, right? So super dope that that happened. Like I said, this experience was amazing. The cutscenes were great. It felt like I was basically watching and playing through a movie. It was seamless. The cutscenes to the gameplay, there was literally no loading times. The only time that they had loading scenes or loading screens were when you went from chapter to chapter. Everything else was like, you would do something, it would trigger a cutscene. And as soon as the cutscene was over, it's not like it would even fade to black and then you have to wait and it would load the level. It would go straight to you playing. How they handled the soundtrack, like they made some very necessary changes that I didn't even realize, not even to say like the original game and how they handled that was a problem, but back then it was not something that I really paid any mind to. Usually you'd expect to hear the victory fanfare, the da 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 right after you beat any like, you know, monster, boss, whatever. In this game, they decided to not go that route. See, what they did instead was they had the music fit the tone and mood of what you were doing at that very moment. So with that in mind, imagine you're going into a section of like the first scene and you get off that train and shit's about to get real. And and you know, like, oh shit, like we're about to get into, into some business. And of course, when you hit that first fight, against those other soldiers, what happens? And then like the battle music starts. And then you're like, oh yeah, like we're we in there, right? The difference in this game is they start you off within an atmospheric tone and you hear that with the underlying soundtrack and it's almost like a subtle tease that opens up into that actual battle music that you're so used to hearing. So when you do start fighting enemies, then it like crescendos and basically transitions into the actual battle music. And then once it's over, it decrescendos and it goes back to that underlying. And dude, that, that just made everything way more like immersive. I was just like, dude, this is crazy. Like, and you don't even notice that you don't even hear the victory fanfare. And it's not even like they totally got rid of it because, and I gotta give it to Barrett. And I don't, I don't have a list of the voice actors right now, but I feel like Barrett was the best character in the game. He was very funny. To hear his lines portrayed the way they were, like out loud in reality, it just levels of appreciation that I, I was just like, dude, I love this character. Hey guys, um, you know these fans are really loud. And you chickening out? <laughs> hell no. <laughs> well, I'm just worried that your bony ass is gonna get blown off the side and shit. <laughs> I know. He helped me laugh. He helped me realize and understand like when shit got real and it got serious, like there's no time for games. He wasn't the character to break the fourth wall, but he was also the character 
that kept the fanfare alive. And this is before a part where you actually do hear the fanfare because in the game, there's like a tournament arc. And when you beat your opponents during this time, you do hear the, uh, like a new refreshed remixed fanfare and it's awesome, right? And it's still the, it's still the same melody, but there's a few times even during battles and went like post battles and, and during cutscene where Barrett literally sings the melody of the victory fanfare. And I was just like, dude, Bar Barrett's the best character. You know, you're better than that. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. That was actually fucking hilarious. I'm s this game is amazing. From the story to the visuals to all the new things that they implemented, I literally loved all of it. Transitioning into the bad, right? The only annoying things that I had with this game is that sometimes it just felt like, I, and especially towards the end, that they they really threw all of these boss battles at you, like one after another after another, and there was like no chill. And I was like, dude, like this is crazy. Like, cause at some parts, and it goes back to the seamlessness from cutscene to gameplay to like action and all that, it was all seamless. It's just like a flow, a flow river, right? It's just smooth flowing and, it's, and you don't even notice any like changes like that. And with this game, like, it was hard to put down. It was very hard to put down. It was really challenging to put down because in other games, you normally, you get to a certain part and you feel like, okay, this is a good place to stop. But the pacing of the game and like, with the story moving the way it did, it felt like there was very little parts to stop at. And it was just like, wow, like, this is insane. Like, I can't believe, like, I am this invested. I am this immersed. Towards the end, I felt like there was a lot of boss battles that they were just kind of threw, threw at us. And there was certain parts where they offer you the opportunity to replay the last battle that you just died at. But then, like, at the very end, they have you redo an entire section not, not even in a section but an entire like fight rather than let you pick up from where you just died so i thought that was kind of annoying and in turn it obviously added more time to my my full-on uh game playthrough and going off of that i have to say that the game that I've been talking about, the game that we've been waiting for for nearly 20 years, more than that. It's been 15 years plus in the making for sure. The game that literally made millions of people happy around the world to even have this. With all that in mind, I have to say that as good as it was, it really negatively affected my life. And when I say negatively affected my life, I mean that I kind of lost myself. I lost myself to this game where I literally had no self-control. And this is like a very pretty big thing for me to admit, especially in video, I had no control. I was so involved and in depth with this game, with this experience, like it was too good. <laughs> like, like it was, it was too good and I had no control. I literally kept playing it. My streams went from three to four hour streams, normal time, from that to 10 to 12 hour streams. And every time I sat down and I got on stream and I played that game, I didn't play it offline not once. As soon as I came online to my stream and I started playing that game, I felt like I was in my own hyperbolic time chamber. Time meant nothing. It did not feel like I spent the last two hours working on the side quest. It did not feel like six hours went by completing maybe a mission and a half or a couple missions or trying to figure out what the best materia combinations with the items and the weaponry and upgrading and all that, all this amazing elements to the game and the experience overall, time was not relative at all. When you're playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, the concept of time almost just eliminates itself. And it's kind of scary. And I realized this during and now talking about it after that I hope that this never happens again. And I'm telling and I'm not saying like I don't I hope that they don't make games this good. I'm just hoping in the future, I shouldn't even say I'm hoping. I'm I'm going to definitively say that this is going to never happen again with me personally. And and I hope that if anybody can relate to my experience, I hope that you guys also 
do the same thing because with my final stream of that game for the main story playthrough i literally did not plan on running a 24 hour stream it ended up being 27 hours but because i put it out there that i was going to beat this game on tuesday i said i'm going to beat this game the second i sit down and i won't stop streaming until i beat it night turned to day i saw the sun come up i heard the birds chirping the sun was bright the garbage came i had people from the uk and other countries watching me play in the middle of the morning and then it as it became the afternoon i had my normal regulars and other friends tune in to let me know that when they went to bed i was still playing and when they woke up I was still here playing. Now, as legendary as some might have been commenting and saying this to me, as complimentary as that might have sounded, I'm honestly not proud of how I handled this. Not getting sleep and playing just the end. Like, it took me that long to finish out the last nine side quests before continuing with chapter 17 and then the final chapter. And then with all of those boss battles, and some of those boss battles seemed so hard and near impossible. There was times where I had to replay boss battles several times. I took many breaks and intermissions that were necessary, you know, to eat breakfast, to get water, to have a snack, to stretch, to just put the game down for a second, to, to talk to the chat. It was an experience like I've never had before. I had people surprisingly stick with me throughout most of that 27 hour stream. You know, a lot of people left obviously to go sleep and then come back later on. And then, like I said, I got, you know, some new followers internationally. And I even got someone as nice enough to gift sub, it was like 21 subscriptions to people that were in the chat. And I hit like two sub goals within that 27 hour stream. It wasn't intended and it wasn't planned, but I'm very grateful that even happened, but at what cost? I just, I just have to say, I have to be honest. I loved the experience, I loved the story, and, and when I finally beat the last portion of the game and I was treated to that amazing cinematic sequence and all of the things that I saw in that ending sequence, I was taken back and it was almost like during that time, all of that gratification and all of that time spent, it all seemed worth it. But I have a question, was it worth it? Was that something that was worth no lifing and literally playing to no end until it was finished? Should I have gone about it in a different way and possibly played like a chapter, a stream, kind of spread myself out normally so that way I could still enjoy and do the other things that I like to do? Because as you guys know, I'm a man of many hats and I, I'm a man that enjoys lots of different things, but I haven't played anything else. I haven't done anything else. As a matter of fact, like some of my other content that I planned on doing had literally was halted. Had I not have spent the day, then spent the day chilling with my girlfriend on Saturday, the day after the game dropped, that was honestly the only rest period that I had in the, mi in, in the midst of my 40 plus hour adventure with this, with this game. I don't know, man. I don't know. This is like probably one of the most real realest of talks that I've had. And I had to document this. I had to get this out there. I had to talk about it. I had to let you guys know my honest feelings and let you know that you're now speaking to, you're now watching a guy that after that 27 hour stream, I, I, I powered through the day just staying awake. I had to stand up. Like, have you ever pulled an all-nighter? And by an all-nighter, I mean like you don't just break night and you're awake until the morning and then you go to bed. Like, no, I'm talking like you stay up and you stay up throughout the entire rest of the day. I didn't go to bed until 8.30 to 9 o'clock p.m. my time last night. And you're now, you're now watching a guy that, that literally for the next 10 hours after that, after I knocked out, I rested for 10 hours straight. Woke up, made myself a big breakfast. I made myself two breakfast sandwiches. That's OJ and I recorded a couple of videos, try to get myself back on track. But because of this game, man, like I, I that game really drained my life energy, my, 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 my Mako, you know what I'm saying? And I have to ask the question, like, I don't know if it was worth it. I really don't know if it was worth it. I, I feel like a lot of it has to do with, with me, obviously, but 
that game was just made so well. It was it was so well made. It exceeded all of my expectations. All of them. Like this game is beyond a 10 out of 10. If this game doesn't win game of the year, I will officially denounce my disapproval of how they decide what gets game of the year. No other game should even be in contendership. Like there should only be one nominee and there should only be one winner. And that is Final Fantasy VII Remake. I think going forward though, while I'm here with you guys talking about this, I have to also say that when the next part comes out, I most certainly will not be doing this again. I will stream it. I will play it and I will enjoy it. But I cannot do that to myself again. I just can't. It's not healthy. It's just not good. It's just not good. So I'm still kind of recouping. And I'm also, you know, trying to, you know, kind of take it easy as well. Because I haven't gone this long and this hard. I've never gotten this hard on any game before in my life. That's pretty much everything I could think of to talk about, really. You know, the good, the bad, the takeaways, the life lessons learned, and how I'm just really excited to see how they handle the rest of the game. And I'm also looking to complete the original. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing a lot of it on stream, but I'm sure I will at some points. If it's something that you would definitely like to watch, obviously hit my Twitch up in the description below and hit that follow button and subscribe if you can. I really appreciate that. I've never played Crisis Core, and that's another game that I really want to play. Because the, the story of Seven is just so amazing. I want to get all of it. I want to know all of the story, all of the lore. Because with the things that's happened in Seven, I'm not going to say a lot, but I feel like this is not even just a remake. It's almost like a reboot in a sense. And with that, I just want to say thank you, Square Enix. Thank you to everyone involved with the game. Big shout outs to all of you guys. You did a phenomenal job. You did an amazing masterpiece of a work. This game was art personified. This is how remakes should be treated. And I was left with <laughs> no energy, speechless. You guys did a very, very good job. And I hope that for those that have not played it or have played it, if you made it this far, I'm also thanking you guys and thanking Bree. I'm thanking everyone that supported the streams and, you know, that are continuing to support me in all of the things that I'm doing right now. So with all that said, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the comments up with your thoughts of the game, my experience, and of course, make sure to like the video. Please make sure to like the video. Take care of yourselves. May the power protect you. Keep it locked loaded right here, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, this is where we're stopping. There's a face that screams, so what? Oh my god, my song, my song. Oh my god, it's a banger!